This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So what are the pros and cons of shooting Fuji? I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel a lot of pressure making this video because my Sony and Canon one pros and cons video, they, they did so well. They both did over 100,000 views and I didn't mean for them to be that good, you know, or to resonate with people. So I feel a lot of pressure making this one, you know, because at the end of the day, I shoot with the X100V a lot, probably more than any other camera, but in terms of like the interchangeable lens cameras, I don't use them very often. I use them for like when they launch, right? Like the X-T5, I've shot with a handful of times. X-T4, X-Pro3, uh, the GFX, which I have yet to shoot. I have it here and I'm, I'm actually gonna shoot with it in two days. I'm gonna make a dedicated video on my first time shooting with medium format and my thoughts, you know, against full frame. And, uh, you know, even the X, the X-H2 and the X X-H2S. Um, I went to New York for the X-H2 for the launch. I had a lot of time with that camera, really enjoyed it. And here is the X-H2S, which um, I've been shooting just, you know, some uh, open gate videos, seeing seeing if it's like uh, something that is valuable to me. I've been really interested in open gate. So yeah, I'll talk about my experience with these cameras so far. Before the new year came in, I wanted to make a video like my camera predictions for 2023 and a lot of that had actually revolved around fujifilm if you guys haven't noticed there has been a lot of hype on the x100b lately this year and you know i've been high on these cameras ever since the x100s maybe like what four or five years ago you know and the hype is not like fuji paid people to create hype on this camera this it created hype on its own and i can tell you why that's part of my prediction What's happening is cameras are becoming so good and the tech is becoming so advanced. Like, I mean, half press a Sony camera, you know, and you get AI autofocus. It focuses on whatever you need just by half pressing the shutter. Cameras are getting so good and the tech is getting so good that it's making the process more sterile. For a paid job, give me that sterile process. You know, give me the camera that's gonna give me the shot. I don't wanna have to take any risk when working for a client but for fun i don't want to pick up my sony camera for fun you know it's almost like cars for example like the sony car like the sony camera is like that that status bmw car you know the one that just it's a good daily driver but it's a very boring driving experience you know when i rented a tesla a couple years ago in florida yeah it's it's faster than most street cars but it's probably one of the most boring driving experiences I've ever had. I don't feel connected to the road and there's no noise, no turbo sounds, no engine revving, very boring. So that's like a good daily driver car, a car that give me from A to B. That's like the Sony, the Canon camera. And Fujifilm is like an S2000, a Honda S2000, a car that may not be the fastest, but you could rev up to 9,000 RPM stick shift and you feel connected to the road and you can brake traction super easy and it's just fun to drive right that is what a fujifilm camera is to me i choose my sony and canon cameras for professional work but i don't want to use them for my fun work for capturing memories and taking pictures without pressure without relieving that instagram pressure like i have to create a banger with this when i pick up the x100b i can just shoot what looks good to me at the moment with no pressure and having dials and and it not even being the best autofocusing camera, like a lot of these are compared to the full frame, it doesn't even matter to me because I have to work for my shot. I have to, it's more, I'm more involved in the process and that's what really drives me to these cameras. And that's why I feel like 2023 Fuji is gonna have a big year because I don't think people are gonna just switch to Fuji in general, but I feel like just like car guys, you have that BMW to go to work in and then you pick up a Fuji camera on the side so you can have fun. So you can be more involved in the process so let's talk about the pros of shooting Fuji. And obviously it's a different day because that other day I just couldn't speak. I just quit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna wear the same shirt another day, whatever. So one of the biggest reasons why I shoot Fuji cameras are for the film simulations. 
For one, it allows me to not shoot for the edit like I do with my other cameras. I'm able to choose a simulation in camera and see the final outcome as I'm taking the picture. There's something very satisfying about that. So right now I'm shooting in classic Chrome uh, film simulation. One thing that a lot of people don't mention that might just be something that's very unique to me, but I also feel like shooting with film simulation, being able to see the image in your viewfinder as you're taking it helps with you or helps me take better pictures. Something about being able to see the contrast and the tones just in real time, it, it allows me to know what what what's going to look good, you know, versus I think this looks good. And then think about like the edit that I'm going to do later. Do I make any sense? I don't know. But it's something that I, I do feel like uh, I'm more selective and more intentional with my composition when I'm shooting with film simulations. Another thing that these film simulations give me is an improved workflow. So instead of having to always import my photos in my computer and process them the way I normally do. The JPEGs are beautiful coming out of this camera and combine that, those beautiful JPEGs where I don't have to edit them or nothing. I send them straight to my phone, airdrop, and then I airdrop and I send them straight to my NSAX wide printer, okay? On this channel, I rarely ever tell you like you need this or you need that. I'll showcase products and give you my opinion. This is probably one of the best purchases I've made, seriously. And, and not sponsored or anything like that. Seriously though, it's because I, a lot of my, a lot of times my photos just sit in the hard drive, even my family photos. And I'm like, okay, one day I'll print them, but I never do, you know, I mean, I just procrastinate. The Instax wide printer is like 150 bucks and it gives you this Polaroid style picture. It prints it just instant right there directly from your phone. It is, and you just could throw it in an album or show your family. It's such a good investment for those procrastinators out there for sure. So this is nice. This is a nice little combo. I just wish that you could directly connect it. For some reason it doesn't, I can't never directly connect it, but anyways. Another huge benefit to shooting Fuji, and this one is probably the most important one, is how the camera makes you feel, the ergonomics, the looks of the camera, and how it inspires you. And I hate saying inspiring because I feel like everyone says that's kind of cliche, so let me try to reword that. I think that because these cameras, like the X-T5, X100V, X-Pro3, they don't, they don't look like computers. They don't look like little computers. They look like little film retro cameras. They look cool. It's almost like going to take pictures is almost like back to that car analogy. If you want to go on a joyride, do you want to take your base model BMW or do you want to take the Honda S2000? Chances are a car guy, you're going to take the Honda S2000 because it makes driving fun. Fuji makes photography fun. It makes it more engaging and I find it that when I'm shooting with my full frame cameras for, you know, like the stuff for like social media and stuff that I'm like for work, for example, I pick up these cameras, specifically the X100B, and it allows me to just have fun with photography. Along with that fun comes with less social media pressure. I could, I'm okay with just experimenting and taking pictures of things that I normally wouldn't with a camera like this versus when I pick up a full frame camera with a big lens, you know, I, I just, I, I want to make every picture count. I only want to take pictures of things that I might post on Instagram. For some reason, my brain is just correlated Fuji cameras with that, like the X100V. I'm just, I'm more comfortable just experimenting and having fun with the process. One important thing that I do need to mention about Fuji cameras and their ergonomics, they have the XH line of cameras that it feels like more, like a, like a more traditional camera where you don't have the dials and it feels better in the hand for sure. 100%, it fills up your hand and it feels so much better for like a long day of shooting, like if I'm shooting a wedding. I don't wanna shoot with a camera like the XT personally. I just, the, it, unless you put like an extra grip on it because it, it does feel very very small in the hand. There's not, that's one of the downsides to it. I will get to that later. But for a long day of shooting, this is not very comfortable. For a long day of shooting, this is great. So they make these XH cameras, I, I feel like more for the professional. And the XT cameras, again, you can still use it for professional work. You have the dials if you want to shoot like that. And the cool thing is, is that you still have these front and rear dials that you can map just like a regular camera. So in a sense, you can operate this XT5 like any other camera. Another big pro of using Fujifilm are the firmware updates that they continue to put out on their older cameras. I feel like what that does is build brand loyalty. You know, you buy into the Fujifilm system and let's say two, three, four years go by and they've released two new cameras. 
you don't feel like your camera's outdated because they continue to make it better, continue to like almost like they're not forgetting about you. They're not like trying to get you to buy the newest thing. And I think a lot of people appreciate that. And to prove my point even further, yesterday, as I'm editing this video, Fuji just announced firmware 3.0 for the X-H2S that's improving autofocus and subject tracking. Another one are the third party options. It just continues to get better and better. Viltrox is at like the forefront of that. The 13 millimeter 1.4, I mean, how much is it? $430? That's one of the, one of the most popular Fuji third party lenses. Then they got the 75 millimeter F1.2 that they just released. It has a little, it has a couple autofocus bugs from what I can tell, but that's like an equivalent of 112 millimeter F1.8 full frame, I believe. Pretty impressive for what, like $549. And then they also have that Sigma 18 to 50, super small zoom lens. Another pro, and this one may not be shocking, but Fujifilm cameras put out pretty good image quality. Uh, I already talked about film simulations. That's part of the equation there. I do feel that the images are you know pleasing i feel like the images lean a little bit more on the pink side when it comes to skin tones but i do want to mention something they just put out new 40 megapixel sensors in their xh2 and the xt5 and i i got to use the xc2 or the xh2 in new york when it first came out took a ton of images with it i got to use the xt5 a little bit in the studio and this is the thing i shot the xt5 and the xt4 side by side 40 megapixels 26 megapixels I did see a resolution increase. You know, I could just I could zoom in a little bit more and see more detail, but in no way is that 26 megapixel sensor outdated or anything. It's not. I'm gonna tell you what I did notice. When all the when both images were perfectly sharp, I could honestly I'd be happy with either one. I'd be totally happy and fine with the 26 megapixel sensor. The biggest difference was the 40 megapixel shine because most of the more of the images were in focus, you know? And that's mostly attributed to the improved autofocus, although it, the self, it has a couple bugs, it's better, and you're gonna get more sharp images. And that's the only thing, my only complaint with the X-T4 is that when I shoot in continuous, cause that's my style of shooting, when I shoot portraits, cause I'm constantly moving back and forth, the autofocus is not always hitting. But when it does hit, I'm perfect, I'm all good with the 26 megapixel sensor. So I think that most people out there that are questioning, should I get the 40? Am I gonna get a lot more? Um, I don't think so. I think 26 is still like a sweet spot and I still, the image quality is coming out. It's, it's still really, really good. Last but not least, another huge benefit, speaking of huge, Fuji makes Fuji, uh, these uh, GFX medium format cameras. So instead of competing in full frame, they decided to dominate the medium format, the affordable medium format market. Uh, I feel like these cameras, I mean, offer insane value for the image quality dynamic range color depth all the things that a commercial photographer or someone that wants the absolute best image this can give you that for the price of almost like a full frame camera you know five six thousand dollars which is insane 100 megapixel sensor that's a very unique offering from fuji when compared to everyone else Although it is a contrast autofocus, I think that people that shoot with this camera are gonna be taking their time anyways. I gotta, I gotta respect Fuji for doing that and for being different. Before we get into the cons, I wanna give my sponsor a shout out, and that is Squarespace. If you have been looking to start a website, blog, or an online store, you need to check them out ASAP. Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. You have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store, like I did, where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you wanna check them out for yourself, use the coupon code MANNY, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. All right, so now I'm gonna share some of the things that I'm just not too fond of when it comes to Fuji. And yes, this is the third time I'm filming to try to finish one video. <laughs> Lately, I don't know what's going on. The moment I press record, my words don't come out. It's almost like you gotta be emotionally ready to film, you know, and I just haven't been like in it, but I'm here, I'm here to finish with a bang, all right? To talk about all the negative things, all the, to rile everyone up in the comments. <laughs> so 
The first thing is the ergonomics. I know that I said earlier that ergonomics is one of my favorite parts of the camera, but it's also one of the downsides. If I remove this thumb grip from the X100V that attaches to the hot shoe, there's barely any grip on this camera and I feel like it's not secure in my hand. Like having something like this is extremely necessary for a camera like the X100V. Same goes for the XT line of cameras. X Pro, you know, XT5 is a little better, but instead of, you know, holding a camera by the grip like this, you're holding, you're pushing the camera up against the sides of your fingers almost to kind of hold it up. And I just, for me, it's not the most comfortable way to hold the camera. The X Pro 3 is one of my favorite, most, I think it's one of the most beautiful designs of just like, a rangefinder inspired camera and experience, but you know, it does have a little grip here and it's kind of the same thing. You're kind of holding it, you know, pressing it up against the side of your fingers. It's not my favorite thing. So that's one of the things that I dislike about, you know, the XT V Pro line of cameras. When I shoot Fuji, I feel like I get the best experience and the most shots in focus when I'm in single AF, right? So when I go to continuous, this is usually when I have an issue with the XT line of cameras. And sometimes even with my X100V, the XH line does a little bit better with continuous, it actually does a lot better, but it's still not perfect. Like it will still put the box over the eye, but the eye is actually not in focus. I don't have that issue with my Sony and Canons. Every now and then it will happen, but it doesn't happen very often, it actually rarely ever happens. So it's something that I have to talk about and I have to mention here because again, because I have a point of comparison, if I didn't know any better, this is the only camera system I use. I would say it's great, you know, but when, again, when you're, when you're used to almost like perfection now with the Sony cameras and the Canons, um, it's something that I notice when I'm using Fuji. So one thing I hope that Fuji implements in the cameras is video touch tracking. So my a7S III FX, all my Sony cameras and Canon, like when you touch the screen, it's just going to track whatever is and that is just made life so easy when I'm doing video or doing product video. With Fuji, still don't have the touch tracking. Although video autofocusing has gotten better, I want to see touch tracking. Another complaint about video AF is, so for example, when I was in uh, New York shooting B-roll for the X-H2, I was walking around like a weirdo, I'm not going to lie. I was walking around like this. I was walking around New York City with one camera in hand and I was holding this camera. I was doing this all over the place. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the boss to do that in Chicago, but I would, I just, I don't know why I'm, I'm in a different place. I don't care what people are thinking. So I'm walking around like this, filming myself, filming myself, hold the camera, you know, the video AF on the X-T4, I was using mostly center point and it did okay. But even when I have the X-H or even when I had the camera positioned right in that autofocusing point, right in the middle, um, I, I would, it would still like pulse. It would still like just quickly, jerk back and forth um i do feel like it is better with the xh2s well what do you know a day after filming this video fuji announces firmware 3.0 improving the autofocus and subject tracking of the xh2s so there goes that i haven't updated yet i haven't tried it yet but i look forward to to uh testing it out pretty soon so we'll see one thing that i wish fuji had improved on the xt5 was making the electronic viewfinder bigger and brighter and when I shot with the against the X-T4, it, it's pretty much the same, you know? And again, it, because I shoot mostly full frame cameras and with the X-H cameras, when you look through the viewfinder, you know, it's a lot bigger and brighter. And uh, only the people that only the people that use have used cameras with bigger, brighter EVFs. So can I, it's like looking at a big screen TV and then going to a camera like like the X-T5, and then you're looking through the EVF and it's just very small. You won't know what I'm talking about right now unless you've used cameras with bigger EVFs. As a photography centric camera, as like their flagship XT model, I wish that they were to, they put a bigger EVF like in the one in the X-H2 or X-H2S into the X-T5. And I'm not, I don't feel like I'm nitpicking either. I feel like this is a legitimate complaint. Another thing that I wish Fuji would improve on and actually this has less to do with Fuji, more to do with the size of the center. It's an APS-C size, APS size center. I mostly use full frame centers. The more and more I do photography, the less and less I actually care about the size of the center because it's all about lighting. Honestly, if you have the same lighting, that's why everyone's doing iPhone videos. Because if you have a certain 
situation with the right amount of lighting, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. And that goes for a lot of, you know, APS-C full frame comparisons as well. But I think on the photographer side, I know people are like, oh, clients are not going to tell clients don't care. Sure. You can have that point. That's true. I think as someone that likes, you know, it's, it's more, it's kind of a selfish thing, more of a photographer thing. The files coming out of my full frame cameras just have more latitude, more flexibility in post when you're shooting outdoors. And that's, I feel like that's not even debatable. I feel it, this, it, there, there definitely is. There's more, I mean, I guess depending which full frame center, but there's more latitude in the image. The color depth, the color is more rich on it uh, coming out of a full frame center. It's almost like the same argument that, you know, a GFX 100S medium format camera, you know, has more color depth and more richness and more latitude than a full frame center. I feel like it's the same when it comes to, you know, APS-C versus full frame. And again, that's not a knock on Fuji because it has an APS-C size center. It's one of the main reasons why I don't pick up Fuji as like my main kit. That's one of the reasons. It's because I know the difference between APS-C and full frame. And it's not what the person, the, the client or whatever, what they're going to notice. It's the things that I notice, you know. And again, it's kind of a selfish thing. It's kind of something that only we notice. But I like to see there's something about the full frame color depth and and latitude and less less overall noise in the image that I prefer. And it has nothing to do with bokeh either. It has nothing to do with the background blur or there being more blur. It's just more about the color color depth and dynamic range in a file in, in a file and being able to to play with it a little bit more. Although I have to say that um, I feel like this is more of a photo thing you know because on the video side i've seen some really impressive dynamic range coming out of like the xh2 uh, s for example but i haven't done much video with fuji so i, I don't want to speak on that so to wrap up this video um i know that i didn't touch on a lot of different things because i just don't have a lot of experience with it like video for example i don't shoot a lot of video with fuji that's why i didn't put it in one of my pros although I feel like they're very competitive in the in the video market right now. Um, I just don't shoot a lot of video with them. I'll tell you what though, the X100V is low key like it could be a video beast. You know, like imagine if it had some kind of digital stabilization in this form factor. You have the built-in ND filter, and I like I use that a lot for like little videos. I mean, they're very jittery, but you got that built-in ND filter, and you can get like a little 4K 30 clip. It's actually pretty cool. Um, imagine if they put like digital stave or something like that where, I don't know, that's interesting. Oh, the 6.2 open gate. I did say I would I would talk about that. So I did shoot 6.2 open gate for a couple of videos in the past and um, that's the future. It is the future. It is, it is actually really useful, especially on a 4K timeline. I have some latitude on each side. It's, it makes sense. I hope Sony does that pretty soon. I said I was gonna wrap it up, but I just, kept talking so overall i am a huge fan of fuji cameras uh for my use i find it that it's a refreshing system to use on the side of my full frame kits and i don't think there's there's no shame in that i think that again we're all going to come to a point where we're going to want to shoot something that's not that doesn't feel like a computer that's not doing all the work for us and that's where Fujifilm kind of sits right now, I think. And that's a really good place because, again, the trend is it, everything is trending toward, you know, not sharp, you know, not everything being sharp. Now people are taking blurry photos on purpose, you know, because there's a, a, an aesthetic to it and it's different. Everybody has sharp images. Everybody can output sharp images now. So it's like everyone's trying to be different. So it's almost like going back a little bit, you know, more into creativity, more into film. And again, that's yeah. That's Fuji. Fuji's got that down for sure, especially with the blurry images, because, you know, you shoot with the X-T4 in continuous mode, you're going to get a lot of blurry images. No, OK, not that blurry. Actually, I was just speaking. I was speaking more about like slow shutter speed, like wedding images. Anyways, it's uh, outro time. My favorite part <laughs> of every video. Um, oh, I, I kind of know how to finish it off. You know, so for 2023, uh, I want to do less sponsored content. I want to do more. I want to do less mid-roll ads. I feel like that always puts a damper on my content and my how much I enjoy making content because I got to create 
this ad for, you know, this plug for a company and then I gotta get it approved and stuff like that. I wanna create more content without that stuff and just enjoy it more. So if you wanna support what I do here on YouTube, um, you know, you can check out my online store. I sell some online presets and these are the ones that I use for all my images, all right? Walmart Drake preset pack, the golden hour one, which is great. Uh, my retouching tutorial, you can check those out. And um, that's a great way of supporting what I do here on YouTube, you know? So I really, I would really appreciate that. All right, buddy. Um, and um, 